You are at the training for testing accommodations for students with disabilities. Our agenda for today is accommodations and the IEP team. We're going to talk about the decision making and the planning that needs to go on before the WKC testing occurs. We have the assessment accommodations matrix and we're going to talk about the specific areas that there are that there are allowable accommodations for. And then we're going to talk about the Wisconsin assessment system request for accommodations. There are accommodations that people can put a request in for that are not listed on the matrix and we're going to talk about how you would have to go about doing that. Uh, when it comes to IEP team decision making, uh, I think it's pretty well known to people, but all accommodations must be documented on the current IEP, the IEP that the student has in hand at this point in time. Um, it must be consistent with day-to-day -day instruction, and we'll talk a little bit more about that further along in the PowerPoint. Um, the real reason for accommodations is to provide students with disabilities um, access to state and district-wide assessments, and it allows our students to uh, have their academic content measured without the interference of their disability. The IEP team needs to determine if the student will take the WKC for all content areas required for a specific grade level. This is something that changed a couple years ago. In the past, students could take WKC for some portions and the Wisconsin Alternative Assessment for other portions. It is an all or nothing test now. It's either all the WKCE or all the WAA. Uh, the IEP team needs to determine if the student will need accommodations. Um, not all students with disabilities may need accommodations. And then you need to document and describe the accommodations if any are needed. And that is specific to the content areas. The form that we use here in Green Bay is the I-11. Um, that's where we record our decision making around accommodations for district and statewide assessments. The things that I really want to stress here is please make sure that the information on the document is clear and accurate. We pull information about testing from ONET and off the I-12. The area that there usually tends to be the most confusion is the first question. It says, if participation in an alternative assessment is not being considered, check here. If you check that it's not being considered, you do not need to fill out the WAA checkboxes. And people then start filling those in. You don't need to do that if you are not considering the WAA. If you are considering the WAA, all four boxes um, need to be checked in the assessment participation criteria because it links down below that the student would be taking the WAA. The next section is participation in statewide assessments. You're documenting that the student is in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, or tenth grade, and you're telling us in that area if the student is taking the WAA or the WKCE. On the bottom, the last box on the, dis on the I-11 is also um, about the accommodations, and you must fill out each section, um, reading, math, language, arts, science, social studies, and the district-wide assessments, and at least for in the cases where it's fourth, eighth, and tenth grade where the, the students will be taking all content areas. There is a box you can check without accommodations that lets us know nothing is needed in that area. And then there is a box with accommodations and they must be listed there. Um, you need to document accommodations on the I-11, even if they are on the I-14 under supplemental aids and services. They need to be in both places. Uh, accommodations that are all allowable test practices for all students must also be documented on the I-12. Even if you're saying it's something that's on the matrix for all students, if you're using it for this student, it needs to be documented in the accommodation section. 
there is research out there, as we had talked about in the first slide, about accommodations and the use of day-to-day -day accommodations. The research states that accommodations can adversely affect the validity of tests if students have not seen the accommodation before and are not familiar with it. This is the reason why accommodations that you are using for the WKCE need to be day-to-day -day accommodations. When we talk about IE team, IEP team planning, the teachers need to be comfortable with the test administration and know the allowable test accommodations for each individual student that is taking the test. Students also need to be familiar. They need to know the test purpose and the use of the accommodations that they will have. You're going to know that the best accommodations are those that are child specific and that are well planned out for the WKCE. Okay, we're going to move into the assessment accommodation matrix. The accommodation matrix for students with disabilities is located at this DPI website. Um, all the matrices, though, for students with um, students that are English language learners and for all students are located at the same site, um, which is kind of what this slide shows you. The one area that I have not covered um, is the Wisconsin alternate assessment. Um, that those accommodations are also listed on the uh, assessment accommodation matrix for students with disabilities. This represents both the WKC and the WAA. There are really six specific areas covered on the accommodation matrix. They are test directions, content presentation, response, setting, time and scheduling, and other, and that's what I discussed earlier in regards to considerations of accommodations that are not listed on the matrix. Test directions. First one, D1, and if people are wondering, the D stands for disability, number one on, on the matrix. Sign language for directions. Can be used for the WKCE and the WAA, that's what the check behind them means. Mark or highlight directions, provide printed copy of teacher directions from the WKC test administration manual, D4 explain or clarify directions, and D5 student rereads or restates directions. As you can see, D2 and D3 are not applicable for the WAA. The next section, content presentation, D6, Turn pages for the student. D7, Braille student responses must be transcribed into a scorable test book by a licensed teacher of the visually impaired or a certified transcriber. D8, DPI provided WAA students with disabilities picture descriptions appropriate only for a student who cannot access the printed WAA students with disabilities, even with magnification or the Braille WAA students with disabilities. As you can see, this does not apply to the WKCE. D9, large print, student responses must be transcribed into a scorable test book. Again, this is not applicable for the WAA. D10, extra test book, Answers must be recorded in one scorable test book. Again, not applicable for the WAA. D11, sign language for test passages and questions, not allowed on the reading tests. D12, test talker for test passages and questions, again, not allowed on the reading test, and this is not applicable for the WAA, which is read aloud. D13, student reads allowed to self. D14, test administrator reads test passages and questions allowed, not allowed on the WKC reading test or the WAA students with disabilities read by student items. D15, 
Student records him or herself reading aloud and plays back the recording. D16, audio recording of test passages and questions in English not allowed on the WKCE reading test or WAA students with disabilities. Again, not applicable for the WAA, which is read aloud. D17, read the reading test only in the following scenarios as described in form I7B. For a student who is blind or visually impaired who is not yet proficient in contracted braille, the WKC reading test passages and questions may be read aloud. And for a student who is blind or visually impaired who is not yet proficient in uncontracted braille, the WAA students with disabilities read by student reading test items may be read aloud. The next area is response, the way the child is providing the response. D18, you can use manipulatives, base 10 blocks, 3D shapes, hundreds charts, not multiplication tables, Whole integer number lines, number boards, etc., are allowed as long as they do not provide a definition or the description of what is being asked. D19, calculator and or multiplication table, and this is not allowed on certain sections of the math test that are measuring computation skills. D20, braille output device, D21, student indicates responses orally to a scribe. And again, if you have questions there, there's a footnote as to the scribe situation. D22, student signs responses to the interpreter or scribe. For the writing test, translation from American Sign Language is not allowed. Student must use English-based sign. D23, student records responses using an audio or video device. Test administrator transcribes students' responses into a scorable test booklet, and student watches or listens to his or her recorded responses and transcribes in to the scorable test booklet. D24, computer or word processor. Responses must be transcribed into the scorable test book. This is for the language arts and writing test. All spelling and grammar checking devices must be turned off. For the mathematics test, the calculator function must be turned off for non-calculator sessions. D25, speech to text devices. Responses must be transcribed into the scorable test book. And for the mathematics test, the calculator function must be turned off for non-calculator sessions. This as well is not allowed on language arts or writing tests. D26, Provide spelling assistance or a spell check device where appropriate. Again, this is not allowed in the language arts or the writing test. Next is the setting that the student is in. D27. The student can move, stand, or pace during individual administration. Time and scheduling. D28. You can provide extra time. Test sessions must be completed, though, within the same day the student started the session. This does not apply, though, to the WAA. They can go by question by question. D29, other accommodations for students with disabilities. This is kind of a lengthy one. If you are looking for an accommodation, that is not listed on the matrix. You must request prior approval. The prior approval must be submitted to DPI at least two weeks prior to the WKCE window. W, uh, DPI then reviews your request and they let us know by email or fax if that accommodation is approved or not approved. If you would be requesting an accommodation that is not on the matrix, this is the website here listed on the slide that you would get the form to fill out to request the accommodation. If a test, excuse me, if your request is approved and an accommodation is approved, 
you then need to make sure that you mark and bubble on the back of the WKCE booklet other approved accommodations. The, the way that DPI determines if they will or will not allow an accommodation is if it affects the validity of the test. The accommodations are to give access and are not um, allowed to change what the test is asking. Key points, what you need to walk away with. Accommodations need to be documented on the IEP. If they're not on the IEP, we cannot be providing those accommodations. And it must be in the section on the I-11. All your accommodations are pre-planned and thought out beforehand. And they are part of the student's daily instruction. The student knows the accommodation and is familiar with it. And you are only using accommodations that are on the assessment accommodation matrix provided by DPI unless you have requested in writing um, from DPI and it is approved.